Royal Group of Hotels is India's second largest hotel empire and home to India's first modern five-star world-class hotel. Having innumerable accolades under its belt, it has become one of the diamonds shining bright on the crown of India's hospitality segment. The group consists of East India Hotels, now known as EIH Limited or EIH Associated Hotels Limited. Here at India Business Insights, we will unravel the story of one of the most prominent hotel chains in India. Before that, we urge you to like and share this video. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. History The story of East India Hotel dates back to 1934 when Rai Bahadur Mohan Singh Oberoi founded the Oberoi Group. Mr. Oberoi acquired his first property, the Clark's Hotel, Shimla, from his mentor by mortgaging his wife's jewellery and all his assets. His hard work ensured that he paid back all the mortgage money over the next five years. In, in 1937, he signed a lease to take over the operations of the 500 rooms Grand Hotel in Calcutta that was on sale following a typhoid epidemic. Customary confidence and sheer determination to succeed, he was able to convert this hotel into a highly profitable business venture. He finally bought the property in 1943. He is recognized as the father of the Indian hotel industry who has left behind a legacy of service quality and perfection which is reflected in his creation of the Oberoi group of hotels. In 1949, it was incorporated as a public limited company. It took Maharaja's Palace in Srinagar on lease and converted it into the Oberoi Palace Hotel in 1956 and commenced its flight services in 1957. In 1965, it began operations at the Oberoi, New Delhi, by a scheme of merger approved by the Calcutta High Court Associated Hotels of India Limited and Hotels, 1938 Private Limited merged into EIH Limited and by virtue of the merger, the company acquired the Oberoi Grand, Kolkata, Maidens Hotel, New Delhi, and the Oberoi Cecil, Shimla. It commenced operations at the Oberoi Towers, Mumbai in 1973. In 1986, the company sought to widen its horizon by entering a 10-year contract with the International Airports Authority to operate at all snack bars and restaurants at terminals in Mumbai. In 1994, it entered a joint venture with the government of Himachal Pradesh to promote Mashobra Resort Limited, Shimla, Windflower Hall and Oberoi Resort. EIH is currently holding 78.79% of the property. It went to change its name from East India Hotels Limited to EIH Limited in 1996 and commenced operations at the Oberoi Rajvilas in Jaipur, its first luxury leisure resort in India in 1997 and also struck a joint venture with Goyals and Bhasins to promote Mumtaz Hotels Limited, the Oberoi Amar Vilas Agra in which EIH holds 60% 60, 60 and Goyals and Bhasins hold 40% between them. It established EIH Flight Services Limited, Mauritius as a wholly owned subsidiary of the company in 2008 and commenced operations at the Trident, Bandra Kurla, Mumbai in 2009. In 2010, EIH International Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of the company, completed an acquisition of 46% equity interest in its international hotels joint venture company. In 2011, it opened the Oberoi, Gurgaon and began operations at Trident, Hyderabad in 2013. It also started a new flight catering facility in Kolkata in 2015 with state-of-the-art equipment to maintain international hygiene standards. In 2016, it opened the Oberoi Sukhvilas Spa Resort, New Chandigarh as a managed property. While MS Oberoi had a strong imprint on the management of the hotel in its initial years, the Oberoi Group was the first to set up a professional school of hotel management in 1966 to train its executives. Even today, 
it is considered among the best schools of hotel management brands over the years the company's brands have helped it emerge as one of the most prominent customer centric players in the hospitality industry from handcrafted delicacies to personalized grandeur and memorable stays it assures its guests a holistic experience at it at its hotels oberoi hotels and resorts in 1934 the late rai bahadur ms oberoi brought luxury hospitality to india with one simple philosophy the guest is everything this belief is upheld by all at oberoi hotels and resorts managed by eih limited the hotels are constructed such that they appear synonymous with elegance majesty and personalized service while providing the greatest experiences and fondest memories to its guests there are currently 20 hotels operating under this brand name maidens hotel everything about maidens hotel which opened in 1903 as one of delhi's first hotels tells an intriguing story including royal fables of princely states to the ruling classes of the british raj The hotel's pearl white exterior creates the perfect contrast with the lush greens of the gardens which are home to majestic peacocks. EIH tries to provide an experience which transports its guests back in time and provide a historically and culturally rich experience with the convenience of modern amenities. The company currently has 55 room under this brand. Trident Hotels They are an excellent choice for both business and leisure travelers providing the ideal combination of modern amenities and personalized dependable service ensuring that every visit is pleasant and convenient it currently has 10 hotels spread across 9 cities under its belt operations india is among the most preferred destinations for travel and tourism across the globe because of its geographic diversity scenic beaches and world heritage sites with the pandemic bearing negative impact on the industry especially during the first half of 2021 air passenger traffic rail freight traffic among others were affected with the easing of the pandemic related lockdowns and a sharp drop in covid-19 positive cases the industry reached pre-pandemic levels in FY 2022 travel restrictions were lifted and international flights were resumed the robust vaccination rollout in fy 2022 helped renew enthusiasm and optimism leading to more holiday plans and improvement in the service sector the luxury travel market is growing at a remarkable pace owing to the increasing need of personalized and exotic travel experiences among customers this growth is expected to be at a cagr of 8.8% between 2021 and 2028 let us now look at some emerging trends automated and digitized touch points to prevent the spread of covid-19 based on the idea of contactless interactions from voice assistant technology payment methods and check in and check out functions popularity of sustainable tourism among global travelers sustainable transportation options such as walking biking and hiking are being favored by the people demand for personal personalization has seen a huge growth in recent years and is likely to augment further now let's look at the various revenue sources of eih first is food and beverages the covid-19 pandemic brought about substantial changes in the food and beverage segment due to the pandemic induced challenges related to delivery supply chain and last mile logistics eih limited reacted with agility to ensure it was able to cater to emerging demands the social distancing restrictions and fear of contracting the virus brought about a series of changes in consumers and there was a gradual shift towards healthier and safer food alternatives eih offers international delicacies and handmade goods perfectly packed for festive gifting these gift boxes include handcrafted cakes single origin chocolates and desserts bread homemade pasta condiments wines from around the globe and more as per requirement 
the tastefully curated hampers are readied using contactless technology, contactless delivery and payments. In addition to this, its tailor-made home delivery menus offer a magnificent culinary experience of Western favourites, do-it-yourself gourmet dishes and traditional Indian delicacies and freshly baked treats from the Oberoi, patisserie and delicatessen all prepared and packed in keeping with the highest safety and hygiene standards which are delivered at the doorstep. The following trends were seen in the F&B business. First is the shift towards healthier foods. Next is the emergence of regional cuisines. Third, homemade convenience. Fourth, shift towards plant-based foods. And lastly, demand for supply chain transparency. The various expansion and growth initiatives undertaken by EIH are as follows. First, it opened two new restaurants, Lapis and Wabi Sabi, during FY 2022. It touted as dining alternatives the hotel's open air venues, a variety of al fresco dining options. The poolside events were also operationalized. Next, facilitated corporates engaged in virtual meetings to order business lunch from hotels. Next, gift wrapped and Festive gifting by Oberoi, Patisserie and Delicatessen. Next, introduced private dining, in-suite gatherings and open-air locations as year-end festivities. Wedding vows and receptions are arranged in the presidential suite and on their terraces. EIH also arranges other romantic settings around the properties for wedding-related events. Next, staycations with spa and wellness focused offers, offers that included luxurious accommodation, food and beverage privileges, as well as the safety and convenience of working from one of the many alfresco areas of the company with high speed internet. In accordance with the pleasure trend, a range of packages for business travelers were introduced with various venues and pricing options. Subscription programs, Oberoi Select, and tried and subscribe. This is an exclusive program that allows the company's customers to pre-purchase room nights at its hotel brands in India. They can choose from the available voucher plans that best meet an individual's requirements and enjoy guaranteed savings and benefits with every stay. This provides a perfect solution for customers who are traveling for business or a family holiday. Oberoi 1 this is a distinctive guest recognition program designed to enhance the experience. The structured recognition and rewards program has been a long-standing request of many of the company's frequent guests. Oberoi One members get access to a variety of exclusive and personalized benefits and privileges from member-only rates on its website and happy hours at the bar to flexible check-in and check-out times complimentary stays and upgrades. Oberoi One members get access to a variety of exclusive and personalized benefits and privileges. Trident Privilege EIH's guest loyalty program, Trident Privilege, offers exciting privileges with a broad spectrum of benefits at each tier. The points can be redeemed for stays, dining and other offers at participating Trident hotels. Who, leveraging its strong brand foundation, the company launched this multi-style lifestyle cafe to cater to the demands of the new India. It is a modern, friend-style patisserie that satiates cravings for scrumptious everyday indulgences, starting with morning coffee and pastries, followed by lunchtime treats and evening drinks with friends. It integrates some extra love throughout the day. It is the ideal place for people who appreciate good food, new flavors, travel, unique adventures and experiences. Catering to a wide consumer segment including young cosmopolitans, the sophisticated and the young at heart. EIH opened its first outlet at the Geo World Drive at Bandra Kurla Complex. This is the first of its kind standalone food and beverage eatery from the Oberoi group and serves bakery items, handmade chocolates 
and ice creams among others. The company started with an owned outlet and will explore franchise models during the later stages of its expansion. Next, we come to financials. The revenue and profitability of the company was affected due to the outbreak of the second and third waves of the COVID-19 pandemic during the financial year. The lockdown imposed by central and state governments as well as other countries globally and consequent travel restrictions to avoid the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic had an adverse impact on almost all channels including corporate, leisure, MICE, that is, meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions and direct business, all of which were severely impacted. The total revenue earned during the year was mainly due to occupancy driven by domestic travellers. With India's very successful vaccination drive that resulted in COVID-19 infection declining, the domestic travel-related marketing and sales initiative taken by the company to boost occupancies resulted in strong improvement in FY 2021 to 20. Strong balance sheet. On the balance sheet front, the company is well placed as far as liquidity and debt is concerned, with DE being 0.2x as the company derives majority of revenues from the domestic market, with Mumbai and Delhi being the key revenue contributors. The company's overall revenue has increased by 17% in the second quarter of FY23 as compared to its FY20 counterpart, that is, the pre-COVID period. Similarly, its expenses have also increased by 2% as against Q2 of FY20. The company was also able to surpass pre-pandemic levels of Rev PAR, ARR and occupancy in Q2 of FY23. Rev PAR growth as against pre-pandemic levels was seen highest in Shimla and Chandigarh at 102% whereas it decreased by 12% in Agra. The company's F&B segment saw a growth of 160% as against its pre-pandemic levels in its revenue. Now, we come to the impact of COVID. COVID had a serious impact on the business of hotels and hospitality industry with restrictions on travel, dining and other activities. The Oberoi Group, like many of its peers, had made, has made huge losses in FY 2020 to 21 and a relatively smaller loss in FY 2021 to 22. It also had to adapt its operations to ensure higher standards of hygiene as far as possible, contactless operations, social distancing and other provisions. The company started making a recovery since the third quarter of FY 2021 to 22 and its performance in the first two quarters of the current year has been the best in many years. It made one of its highly quarterly, highest quarterly profits in Q1 and it made a reasonable profit of INR 22 crores in Q2, which is generally a weak quarter for the entire hotel industry. Now we come to shareholding and strategic alliance. While the Oberoi family continues to hold a large stake in the company, the Oberoi family owns around 35.74% of the stake. ITC, the cigarette to tobacco giant, had acquired close to 15% equity stake. This brought it precariously close to triggering an open offer. To ward off the pressure from ITC, the Oberoi family offered a 15% stake to the Ambani's, who are now said to have increased their stake to around 20%. The Oberoi Group consists of EIH Limited and EIH Associated Hotels. The later company owns some of the hotels of the Oberoi Group, which are also operated under the Oberoi and the EIH Associated Hotels was incorporated as Pleasant Hotels by the Rani Group and acquired by the Oberoi Group in 1987. The Oberoi Group started managing these hotels in March 1988 and in 1996, the name was changed to EIH Associate Hotel. Future Direction The rich and varied culture of India makes it a major travel destination for many international tourists. 
the year 2021 turned out to be a recovery year for the Indian travel and hospitality sector post the 2020 pandemic. The tourist and hospitality industry is one of the largest service industries in India. For the past decade, the tourism sector accounted for about 7% of India's GDP. In FY2020, the industry accounted for 39 million jobs, which is projected to increase to 53 million jobs by 2027, while the earlier part of Q4 started to witness an impact due to the Omicron wave. The quarter was the best performing period of the year, bolstered by long weekends, festivals and social gatherings. The sector witnessed a doubling of revenue per available room. The hotel industry in India is expected to reach a value of INR 1.2 trillion by the end of 2023, owing to the high arrival rate of foreign tourists and business delegates. Leading hotel companies are leveraging advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, near field communication, mobile payment, and data analytics to increase online reservations improve the return on advertising spend, better understand guest preferences, and build stronger customer relationships. There is significant pent-up demand for tourism in the domestic market due to restrictions imposed over the last two years caused by the pandemic. There is very little fresh inventory of rooms coming up. The construction of new hotels has been at its lowest in many years. The demand growth is far ahead of the expected supply for the next years. The company is adding 20 properties under owned and managed contracts to its portfolio over the next five years. Of these, EIS hotels and resorts under planning and development. Construction of the Oberoi, Doha, is currently underway. The luxury hotel will consist of 237 rooms and suites. In addition, 45 serviced apartments are being built within the development. The hotel is likely to open in the fourth quarter of 2023. The property will be managed by a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. Work on the Oberoi Rajkar Palace, located near Khajuraho, Madhya Pradesh, is in progress. The resort will provide luxury accommodation on a 62-acre site next to the Pana Forest Reserve. Land Use consent for the company's 55-acre beachfront site at Goa has been obtained. Further approvals will be sought once planning of the resort has been completed. Planning of the Oberoi Hotel as a part of mixed-use development in Bangalore is in progress. The Oberoi Wildlife Resort, Bandhavkar, is located on a 22-acre site, 5 kilometers from Bandhavkar National Park in Madhya Pradesh. The jungle resort will consist of luxury tents, a restaurant and a spa. The construction of the resort is underway and is likely to open in the third quarter of 2023. This resort will be managed by EIH Limited. The overseas subsidiary of the company will operate two resorts, that is the Obroi and Trident. On the island of Koh Tan, located 5 kilometers southwest of Koh Samoy, Thailand, the lush green 100-acre site overlooks a 2-kilometer pristine beach. The plan incorporates an Oberoi Resort and Trident Resort with several restaurants, meeting and recreation facilities, spas and wellness centers. Planning of both hotels is in progress. The Oberoi Kathmandu is being developed on a greenfield site measuring 6 acres. The luxury hotel will be near important tourist attractions of the Royal Palace and other important business locations. The hotel will incorporate 80 keys on a low-rise garden setting with multiple restaurants, meeting facilities, spa and wellness centre and recreational facilities. The hotel will be managed by a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. The Oberoi Wildlife Resort located next to Bardia National Park, Nepal will be developed on a greenfield site measuring approximately 30 acres. The resort will comprise 20 luxury tents, a, re a restaurant, a spa and a wellness centre. The hotel will be managed by a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. Now, we come to the conclusion. EIH continues to enjoy the confidence of its customers as a renowned luxury hotel company. 
with a strong balance sheet and a strategic property locations across key destinations the company is best positioned to ride on the long term growth story while giving back to the community and the environment simultaneously with this we come to the end of the video thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel